Friday the 25th of April, 1986. A beautiful spring day for the 43,000 inhabitants of Pripyat in the Ukraine. A day that will remain forever engraved in their memory. Three kilometers from the city, the Vladimir Ilyich Lenin nuclear power plant, where several thousand people go to work each day. Tonight, the 176 employees of Block 4 have been ordered to carry out a test on a self-fueling system of the reactor, something that could save energy. At 1.23 a.m., the security systems are deactivated and the experiment begins. A series of detonations go off in the core of the reactor. While Pripyat sleeps peacefully, the floor of the plant begins to tremble. suddenly blasts into the air. An ultra-powerful stream of radioactive vapor releases uranium and graphite over hundreds of meters around the plant. From the gaping hole, a spray of fire charged with radioactive particles in fusion shoots a thousand By early morning, the clouds are already being contaminated by the radioactive column rising 1,000 meters into the sky. Igor Kostin was a photographer with the news agency Novosti. When a friend and helicopter pilot phones him that morning to offer to fly him over Chernobyl, all Kostin knows is that something has happened at the plant during the night. He is the first journalist to witness the gate. When we got close to block four and circled around it, I had no idea of the risk. When we flew over the block, I opened the window of the helicopter. I didn't realize then what a big mistake that was. The thin, translucent smoke he sees rising from the ruins is in fact highly radioactive. Kostin is one of the few Chernobyl reporters on the scene in the early hours of the accident to have survived serious exposure to radiation. When I opened the window, I couldn't hear a thing. The ruins of the reactor were below me. I felt like I was floating in space, like in a tomb, a real dead silence. I couldn't even hear the helicopter anymore, nothing, a black hole, a tomb and deathly silence. This is the first picture ever taken of the breach. All my equipment jumped after a minute. I couldn't understand what was going on. I thought my batteries were dead. I only managed to take a dozen photos. Once I returned to Kiev, I processed my pictures and I noticed the negatives were black. 
and the colors very poor. I didn't know it yet, but the photos had been exposed to radioactivity. For Pripyat's 43,000 inhabitants, life goes on as usual. They know nothing of the disaster, three kilometers away. 30 hours after the explosion, the first security measures are enforced. More than 1,000 buses have arrived. At 2 p.m., the army announces the city is to be completely evacuated. I remember that in the hospital, we gave tablets. I remember the teachers at the kindergarten gave us iodine pills. Then parents came to pick up their kids. Everyone was running around, but they weren't panicking. We thought we were only going to be gone for three days. To avoid any panic, the authorities conceal the seriousness of the situation. Inhabitants are given two hours to gather their belongings and assemble in front of their buildings. They told us to get in the buses. I remember perfectly well having to choose which toys I was going to take. I had a lot of dolls and wanted to bring them all, but I couldn't. We couldn't even take any warm clothes. People have to leave everything they own, their entire lives behind. They will never return. A gigantic ballet begins. Top pilots have been rushed back from the Afghan front to fly helicopters carrying soldiers who will toss 80 kilo sandbags into the blaze with their bare hands. They hope to smother the fire by filling the reactor with tons of sand and boric acid, which neutralizes radiation. The first day, 110 sorties. The next, 300. The radiation level above the reactor is over 3,500 ronjons, almost nine times the lethal dose. Some of the pilots make up to 33 flights in a single day. The initial symptoms of radiation sickness Vomiting, nausea and diarrhea are followed by a latency period. It's only later that much more fatal symptoms appear, such as deterioration of bone marrow and horrible burns that eat flesh down to the bone. Thirty kilometers east of the plant, the forest has been scorched by the radioactive blast from the explosion. But the disaster area already stretches well beyond. Since the explosion, radioactive particles carried by the clouds have been falling with the rain. A leopard spot pattern of contamination has affected the Ukraine as well as Belarusia and Russia. On the 1st of May, the wind shifts and areas of Kiev are also contaminated. As seen from this map, drawn up from the readings taken by Colonel Grebenyuk's men. The seriously contaminated areas appear in red, surrounded by areas where the radiation level was normal. But the population is still kept in the dark. There is only one report, a tiny article on the bottom of page three of the Pravda, playing down the accident and claiming the danger has passed. 